Hello, and welcome to the podcast where we are currently recapping the events of the Transformers IDW 2005 continuity. I'm Onyx Prime with my two co-hosts here. Hi, I'm Computron. Hi, I'm Kilobyte. Moving on with our comic book discussion takes us to today's episode, IDW Transformers Robots in Disguise Volume 3. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, go read it. It's a good time. Fun Just stuff happens. Yeah. Then come back and listen to the podcast. Now, onwards. Both Computron and myself have read this already. I mean, you should know this by now, but that's okay. This is Kilobyte's first time, and we are excited to hear his thoughts. But before we dive into Kilobyte's thoughts, Computron, you have something to say for us. Uh, something about like some trivia and some facts. Yeah, give um. us the fun stuff. The juicy <laughs> stuff. I almost like one stuff, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's dive in some facts and trivia here. Uh, so there are a total of two uh, comics plus the annual for this uh, uh, volume. Uh, the annual was released September 26, 2012, while the tenth issue of this series uh, in this volume was released October 10th, 2012, and the eleventh being November 21st. 2012. The writers for the annual and other issues, the writer was John Barber, and the artist for the annual was Brandon Calhill, with flashback art by Guido Guidi, and colors by Joanna La Fuente. Uh, the artists for the other two issues uh, include Livio Ramondelli, John Wyckoff, with colors by Priscilla Tremontano. All right, so trivia. In the Robots in Disguise annual, there's a reference to the More Than Meets the Eye annual. Cyclonus claims to have seen Titans before, and even prayed in their shadow. While nothing explicitly stated contradicts this, uh, in this annual, the obvious implication of the issue is that by Nova Prime's time, people believe the Titans have left Cybertron. Uh, much later in the series, it was indicated that there was some overlap between the departure of the Titans and Nova's rise to power, you know, smoothing the uh, issue out. Of course, got to retcon some stuff. Cough, cough. Uh, in, <laughs> in issue 10, John Barber has noted his appreciation for the show Lost in the past, because, you know, it ended great. Uh, continuing, uh, it, <laughs> it would be a remiss of us. Not to note that the premise of this issue bears some similarities to that of the show's fifth season, where the cast became uh, unstuck in time, bouncing back and forth in the show's timeline and tying up lingering lore questions. Uh, of course, in the case of this issue, the main continuity discrepancy uh, being fixed wasn't an intentional one. The most explicit similarities to the show's time travel mechanics are the white flash seen on the transition between page 8 and 9, uh, and the significance of the angle of approach to the uh, location. All right, last one. Did you know Swerve gives us a discount at the bar if you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel? Please just like and subscribe. I am running out of Shannon. Please, they're so expensive. He charges way too much. I put everything on Onyx's tab, so please. <laughs> the Computron. <laughs> That's why it charges me more. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's, uh, let's skip this. And Mr. Kilo, would you t- like to tell us uh, some the summary of this? We'll do. Can I get you guys to put another drink on Onyx's tab? <laughs> Hello. Kilo, oh, what do you mean, Kilo? <laughs> You might have too much to drink already, both of you. Okay, so since we have a, an annual, and then um, they'll have a, a little bit of what's going on, so I'm going to do three different uh, summaries. So for the first one, across both the past and the present, ancient powers result in the rise of new leaders for Cybertron. But will they save the planet or doom it? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, next one is Orion Pack's pursuit of Jahaxis takes him not just to LV-117, but through time itself. That's a fun journey. And finally, when his public standing is weakened by a mysterious bombing, Starscream is forced into a secret alliance with Prowl and RC. This is not going to end well. Yeah, well. <laughs> but as always, this information has been taken from the wiki. Fantastic. Shall we get started? We shall. Computron? 
I suppose. I'm drinking this real quick. It's so okay. good. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some K-Juice? Uh, no. Absolutely uh, I still not. have a case of it. All right. All right. We continue our adventure. With wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an idea. Yes. Uh -huh. What if we gave that K-Juice to Waspinator? Ooh, good point. Ooh, we can also charge him. That's not going to end well. For we just need to find out where he went. Maybe we'll do that after this episode. We continue yes. our adventure with Optimus chasing down a ship. But this time, it seems a little funky. It, it appears to be the same ship that disappeared in front of uh, Bumblebee and Willjack in the previous Robots in the Skies issue. Uh, and time keeps flickering back and forth. We also see Bludgeon and Monstructor, which is always fun. What's your thoughts? Uh, it was very interesting and kind of trippy because you, you kind of go back and forth and you see different scenes that are like in the past but have already happened at the same time. So um, I was like, okay, this is going to be a wild ride. This yeah. is the, this is one of those comics you're going to probably either do two things. One, have a notepad sitting next to you. Or two, drink some K-Juice and mix it with something and try to pound this uh, series out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or read it twice to understand what's going on. I know I had to, but my favorite part was learning that the bludgeon in this volume is not the same bludgeon we saw in the previous one. No, instead, this version's bludgeon is a bludgeon in the past, whereas the one That's we saw time. in the previous one was one from the future. It gets all timey-wimey. It lot is of confusing. Stuff yeah, a lot of crazy stuff happens. We see turmoil, Varta, Jahaxis, and a chase that spirals almost literally through time. Um, but at this point, they're they're searching for a specific ore, ore one. Killbite, do you have an idea what that ore does? We kind of seen what ore thirteen does. It makes uh, Starscream super strong, <laughs> as we saw. But ore one. Uh, I feel like the ores uh, have like uh, unique powers to them, right? Because we see stars can be super strong. So I think this one might handle uh, space particles or like time and space particles. So it'll allow you to like flow through time and kind of disrupt it as you see fit if you can control them. Hmm, interesting theory. I like it. You might be onto something. <laughs> But then we move on to the annual. The annual is kind of like sandwiched between the two issues, 10 and 11, uh, which starts off with us far, far in the past. We're not done with time travel, boys. Um, this is more of a flashback, though. Uh, far off in the past with Nova Prime that has finally found something. At this point, we don't know much what he's found, uh, but it appears to be Crystal City and Omega Supreme. He seems... Um, happy about it. What are your thoughts? What could possibly go wrong here? <laughs> uh, first of all, I love the retro art for like the the past uh, scenes. I think uh, it, it makes it look uh, kind of like you can distinguish what's the past and what's the present. So I thought that was a nice touch. A theme that they continued with like this and MTME, right? Yeah, uh, Guido Guidi did a fantastic job with that. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Yeah, no, I'm I'm hoping they they continue it because I I love I love seeing it in the in the previous one. So this is gonna be fun again. But uh, I liked all the designs. I like um, surprise of the team or like the group he's with because uh, we see yeah. Galvatron, Jihax, his Dialis, and Cyclones. So I'm like, oh, okay. So they've been in Cybertron for a long, long time. They're not kind of like uh, from the same period as Optimus and the rest of the bots that we're used to. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I kind of want to know more. Kind of want to know what they're doing, what the what they did in the past to cause such problems. <laughs> Hopefully, we can figure that out, right? But yeah. before we do that, we're gonna follow the flow of the comics, and we flip to present day Starscream, Metalhawk, and Blur, who have currently stumbled upon a sleeping Titan. Hmm, could this be the same Titan we saw in the More Than Meets the Eye volume previously? That was I my theory, uh, but I, I wasn't quite sure at the time if it was the, the same one or not. Yeah? At first I saw it, I'm like, Metroplex? And I'm like, no, Metroplex is with a... It's Alpha Trion. Alpha, Tri Alpha Trion. 
Uh, but <laughs> but then I'm like, no, because the other the, the one in the previous comic looked like Me- Me- Metroplex, but it wasn't Metroplex. So I don't know if it ever confirms what happens to that Titan, but I think this is that Titan. That is what I am thinking right now. If I am wrong, listeners, please let me know. This has been begging me. I kind of wanted to jump in and say, like, you know, for me, this is obviously this is my second time reading it. But like, I kind of like also want to say this is my first time rereading it because now that I'm like catching that it's oh, OK. At first, I just thought it was some random Titan when I first yeah. read it. You catch, you catch a lot of stuff on the second <laughs> yeah. reading. Like, I guarantee, like, even sometimes on the third time, the fourth time is like, okay, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. And that's where I'm at, right? But, <laughs> but, like, if you ever read this series all the way through, I heavily encourage rereading it again because the second it's time through, you will catch... Yeah, you will catch things you did not see the first time. And you will go in knowing what's going to happen. So you know the first thought things that are going to... What am I trying to say? You, you'll know the main plot, but you don't know the yeah. little hints that yeah, lead the little the main plot. background things, like background characters. Like sometimes there's a little character in the background that you didn't know played an important role or you didn't see him the first time. And you're like, ah, I gotcha. See you. Anyway, little derail there. Uh, back to the past with some Nova Prime Jahaxes have raised a recently discovered crystal city from underneath the ground to the surface and have brought peace. We get a nice shot with what looks like Tailgate and possibly Orion Pax walking around. Sounds nice. This looks like the Golden Era. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, it looks peaceful. It looks, uh, it looks like uh, what we're trying to achieve, right, with uh, the Pax Cybertronia. Yeah. Tailgate. <laughs> Poor tailgate. Literally does he know he's gonna fall in a hole. <laughs> uh but we do get a see the origin story of Monstructor. Kilobyte, Computron, what are your thoughts? I know I've spoiled a little bit in a previous volume, but what are your thoughts? I think I was nagging you on on that one. Uh <laughs> uh rereading it, it's nice. I mean, um I kinda new i mean like we we both know that it was for, first formulated from uh geoxys right right yes yes yeah and i'll let you kind of continue kilo oh, okay <laughs> well <laughs> i found it interesting because i thought monstructor was a like it was built completely as a combiner so um like it was like like the whole combiner was just single bot instead of multiple uh, I know the combiner word is because multiple combined, but since it was built by Jihaxes, I thought he just built a massive bot and then he built it that they could uncombine or like eventually he fixed that and then they could uncombine. And uh, but when when they uncombine in the previous issue, they all stayed in their like animal forms. So I thought it was just a, a way to make it move quicker. I didn't know it was like actual bots that he helped them combine. So I thought that was very interesting. Hope, hope is a strong word here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say they they volunteered, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They they probably sold them some bogus slogan about this is gonna bring peace and stuff, and that's how they volunteered. But but I like that since it, it was like built and connected by Jahaxes, that that they lose control and they just go on a rampage. So I think yeah. that was that's pretty cool. And uh, who stops this rampage? Uh, Omega Supreme. Yeah, and that's that's pretty fun to see. Do you do you have any theories on why he went insane or crazy? Monstructor, that is. Yeah, I feel like since it's five uh, different bots and they're all their like thoughts go into one, since they were like, it wasn't like a normal transition. It was more like a forced one the the overload of all five consciousness trying to like take over just kind of made the bot kind of lose control and just go kind of rampage like everything everybody's trying to be the pilot and they can't control it so it just it starts moving erratically around the whole city yeah yeah well said i think you're you're right you're obviously onto something you're learning quite a bit kilo <laughs> i'm a fast learner <laughs> He's actually picking up way better than my first time reading it, but I, I am going to kind of throw out a, a bad spoiler. Like, it just kind of makes me excited for kind of Combiner Wars. 
I don't Ooh. know if that's a bad spot. Spoiler. Ooh. It's actually the name of the comic. You didn't spoil anything. You're just saying. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for Combiner Wars. So like, a, Combiners have always been cool in, in, the, in the universe. It's just of like, I love that they're like slowly getting there. And they're like, you're going to get the good stuff. Just hold <laughs> on. Have a little bit. Well, have I'm, some appetizer. <laughs> I'm more excited because uh, Onyx told me last time that Superior was the first one that wasn't like helped by anybody. And like most of the time, uh, like with previous combiners I've seen in, in continuities and shows and stuff, like I always thought they were either they already had the ability, or like in the case of the Constructicons, they were helped by somebody. Uh, and so eventually, I know, uh, like I've, I've seen it in, in, I saw it in a YouTube show that they had the combination, the Enigma of combination. So I thought they were born from the Enigma, but then Superior was not born from it they couldn't combine before so i'm like more intrigued now to find out what's going to happen with all of that yeah i can't wait for you to find out <laughs> so back to railroading us um to the present current turn time prowl shows up and tells everyone to stay put as they investigate the newly found titan but starscream does what starscream God. does best he decides <laughs> the public should know about it and invites everyone Peacefully, I I put my fingers quote quotation marks, but this again is an audio platform. Uh, very interesting move, yet very strategical. What is your thoughts? I know I know what he why he did it because they're trying to kind of unsettle, like make the Autobots feel unsettled because they're a they're, total political power move. Yeah, it's a total yeah political move on Absolutely. his part, you know. Yeah, and during this, uh, Starscream sneaks down to visit the Titan and eavesdrops on Wheeljack, saying the Titan may cause an explosion or a singularity. I'm not a scientist, but those are bad. That doesn't sound good. It sounds great. What are you talking about? <laughs> Computron. I don't know. You do the calculations, Computron. That's what you do best. Yeah, it kind of puts me out of still. <laughs> Calculating. While that's going on. <laughs> uh, we're going to flip back to the past. Omega <laughs> Supreme finishes his fight uh, with the group that calls himself Monstructor. And we discover what Omega Supreme was truly guarding. Because he trusts Daya Atlas more than the other members of the group that first met him. And what's that? It's a Titan. Yeah. Titan underneath Crystal City. No. And again, I think this is the same Titan. I think so too. Either that or everyone looks like Metroplex. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he says something very interesting. He says that only a great Cybertronian can awaken these Titans. Um, but before we can continue with what that ominous wording could mean, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Hey, Onyx, what do you have there? Garbage O's. They are fantastic. Can I have some? Of course you can! They have all your daily minerals and energon you will need throughout the day, all jam-packed into a delicious breakfast cereal. I can't wait to try some! You can find Garbage O's at your local Autobot factory, or if you know a bot named Swindle. If purchasing a Garbage O's product, you are therefore agreeing to the following terms and conditions. Garbage O's is not responsible for any turbo mice found in products. There are no refunds or exchanges. Oh, Primus, I forgot my faceplate was still on. And welcome back, Killbite. What could this ominous words from the Great Omega Supreme mean? I feel like, uh, in the way that they, like he phrased it, is sounds like uh, somebody with the Matrix would be able to to awaken the Titans. And... The true Matrix, right? Not the fake one. Yeah. Yes, the true Matrix. What fake? What? <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the the one with true Matrix, the one that's the that has a true spark in the sense of wanting to lead the Cybertronian race into a peaceful time would be able to wake them up. Yeah, which brings us to the present. Like, it's almost as if we're being told the past story on purpose. <laughs> the Titan awakens just before Starscream and gives Starscream a prophecy. What are your thoughts and what... what does he say that could be so important? Uh, the Titan 
tells Starscream that he is the Conqueror, uh, and he's the one that will unite Cybertron scattered warriors, and that he sees what's in his spark, meaning that his spark is kind of uh, powerful and pure in a way uh, to lead the Cybertron race. <laughs> Uh, I was I was shocked. I thought that maybe there was somebody else down there and uh, triggered it because it was probably in Starscream in front of the Titan, and that's when it woken. But when it said Starscream, I'm like, okay, I guess I guess Starscream is pure now and supposed to lead us to the future. Which uh, I don't know. Knowing Starscream, I don't know if he'll do a good job. Well, do you trust him given all the events you've read? No, I don't. Yeah, fair enough. But we will it be entertaining? A... Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just absolutely. We then are set um, with Omega Supreme talking to Metal Hawk, just as he did with Dia Atlas before. And I find the similarities very interesting. Yeah, especially both members that have been in the Crystal City before. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. Dia Atlas is still the leader of the Crystal Cities, and then Metal Hawk was once part of them. I thought the. I thought that's very interesting, and it feels like he could be, I don't want to say a descendant, but he could be like the next one to lead Crystal City once Diatlas kind of retires or something. Yeah, yeah. No one tell him what happened to Crystal City then. Oh, that is true. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Before Starscream can celebrate, a huge explosion goes off, and Omega Supreme is caught on fire and poorly damaged. Who done it? At first, I thought that they were like, because this happens when Metal Hawk and Starscream are having a conversation, and uh, I thought that they were gonna start accusing the Autobots of doing that, because you know, political parties, Autobots have been doing some questionable things, and now that Starscream has been told he's the savior in a way and supposed to lead us, then this happens to Omega Supreme. Uh, but surprisingly, the news started saying it was Decepticons. The Decepticons did it, and I'm like, huh, okay, interesting. Yeah, it is, it is their M.O., but um, who do you think did it? Oh, uh, at this point, I had no idea. Um, I thought maybe it was one, one of those other explosions from the planet, and mm-hmm. it just blew up where Omega Supreme was. Ampetron, the first time reading this, who did you think done it? I thought it was Starscream because, um, one, you had a Titan that kind of told Starscream it was the chosen one. And, you know, you have this Guardian, should I say, because that's what they were originally called, right? Right. Yeah, the Omega Sentinels. Yeah. And you had the Sentinels that are, like, kind of, like, in the way. And I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. But, like, to me, Omega Supreme was in his way. And I thought for a second, like, okay... You have a titan that's convincing people that you're the greatest chosen one there is. You might want to get rid of something that can conjunct or uh, argue against that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I agree. I didn't think it was Starscream because he's he was being praised by the, the titan so much. I'm like, why, why eliminate Omega Supreme, which kind of has been guarding I was also kind of doing the devil's time. advocate. I don't know. It's yeah. just it's both. Yeah, no. like, okay, this, this is gonna be a complicated way to point it at Starscream and it's like okay yeah. I'm gonna pull that yeah. one. I don't know. It's just like he's he he already got what he wanted, which was like the fame and everybody, you know, wanting him. So like for him to do an explosion is kinda like weird at this point because he, he, he has what he needs. He doesn't need to ruin it, right? Yeah. But, true. Well, I guess if Starscream is not guilty, he's doing a good job of showing it. Because he assumes Shockwave is behind the explosion and decides to confront him. And oh boy, Shockwave gives him a warning. And it just chills. Like, if Shockwave gives you a warning, uh, you you listen, (laughs) I feel. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Starscream decides to continue and finds friends in low places, i.e. Swindle and Dirge. What could he be up to? Mm. Oh, you mean Shockwave or Starscream? Yep. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, Dirge is pretty much... Dirge and Swindle are kind of scared of Shockwave, right? And they just want uh, protection from both 
the factions from the Decepticons and the the Autobots. Everybody mm. knows Shockwave's up to something. They just don't yeah. want to be on the other end of the barrel. Yeah, so <laughs> I think they Is just... Pun? Is that a pun intended? Because they, they're all living inside of a barrel? In a barrel, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm owning that one. <laughs> That's due for owning zero original. <laughs> <laughs> so Starscream, after talking to his friends in love places, decides to tell the truth again this time to prowl weird and careful if he keeps doing that he'll end up in jail anyways mm. uh, informing him shockwave wants to start the war again which leads to more rc assassination schemes poor ravage poor rumble poor everyone else who doesn't die in this comic what's your thoughts on this uh uh I kinda, I kinda murder liked party i liked it uh, I think she she did some pretty fun uh, one-liners because like they yeah. they said like oh what are you gonna do with those swords we have a barrel or or a gun or something like that and she's like oh, I'm here to deflect the the shrapnel and they're like what when the there's an explosion I'm like that was pretty funny yeah she's pretty brutal she's been there for what we find out is an hour leaving bombs and blows them all up everybody's favorite assassin yeah yeah uh, pretty scary stuff. To the point where, more importantly, what are your thoughts on Starscream and RC's scheme here? Getting rid of his rivals, including Prowl. Oh, the way I read it was that Prowl set it up on purpose so they wouldn't think it was him. It was the Decepticons? He set it up to make it seem like the Decepticons were taken out, but then he got exploded too, right? Yeah, because... Yeah. What I thought is that they planted the bombs and then he walked in and then had the bombs explode. But then, of, of course, he was going to be protected somehow. And, and that way they wouldn't say that he killed the Decepticons. And it was he went in to arrest them and then the Decepticon traps blew everybody up. But I guess I guess I read it wrong. I guess uh, it was Starscream and RC. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Hmm. Well, that's not the most shocking twist here. At the end, someone far in the distance of the city, Starscream sees a ghost from his past. Who is it? Everybody's favorite. Old man's back in town again. The almighty Megatron. Or, I mean, you could say part of him is. Yeah, what's left of him. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. Is this, it still is looks pretty a, cool, though. It is was. This, do you think he's actually seen this, or do you think it's his uh, subconscious? Uh, I think he's seeing it. <laughs> well, one is real and one is not, you know? <laughs> it's like it's like Voldemort. If you see him, no, nah, he's there. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's him. I think he's there. And I don't know where he's been all this time, but it looks like he wasn't in a, in a fun place. He was limping around. <laughs> you, do you see how fast he was walking? Yeah. Do you think what, uh, what, what piece we've seen is over now? I think so. Um, yeah. I think it'll be interesting to see how they're going to deal with him when he shows up. So uh, I do feel bad for Starscream because this is the second time where he finally is in a position in like a, a place where he's like in position in command and suddenly Megatron shows up and just takes it away from him. Yeah, the old <laughs> one was uh, they were living on a, a moon or an asteroid. Yeah. Yeah, and he showed up as his new stealth bomber body. Yep. Do you guys remember in All Hail Megatron? Like, uh, Megatron even promised that he'll give Star Starscream the authority. But it's like, nope, you gotta earn it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, any last thoughts, comments, or anything you want to say about this com oh, volume? A lot of double cross in this volume. Yeah. So I do like the, the origin stories and, like, the flashbacks. I thought that was pretty cool, and the art was spot on. Especially, like, since you could notice which one's in the present and which was in the past. Yeah, I like that when the art's very noticeable that you can tell the difference between present and past. It makes it easier to read. Yeah. Uh, Rod Star rating. Uh, I think I'll give it a three point five. I like it. I think it was fun. Like the whole, all the mysteries, all the plotting, all the uh, surprises were very fun. But I think it's still kind of like in the in the middle ground so far. It's still nothing major. Is like oh okay, and I it gets me super excited. I'll probably give this a four. I like it. Uh, 
It, has, it can only be 0.5s, right? Yes. Uh, yes, unless you want to make the the art for the stars. <laughs> um, I'll give it a 3.5. Um, it's, you know, like I said, our AD is just a really good setup story. And this one, this, this one in particular is actually a really good setup story within a setup story. So, yeah, 3.5. Yeah, it's not bad. So, listeners, what do you think of these comics? What was your favorite part? How many Rod Stars would you give it? And let us know by leaving a comment below. I look forward to, to reading those. Uh, Computron, we have a giveaway. Do you mind giving us the, the details? Yeah. Uh, so, we, as in... I don't think I'm going... It, it would have to be we, because if it was me, it wouldn't be given away. But anyway, we are giving away a Transformers 86 line jazz toy. Uh, the giveaway will run for another week, uh, and the winner will be announced on the Earth calendar month and date of January 24th, 2022. So, here's how to enter. First... You will need to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter. And for each, uh, both of those count as a single entry for each. Uh, you can earn bonus entries to win by leaving a comment or retweeting this episode. You only have a week left to enter. So good luck. Thank you for that. I hope I win. Excuse me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I made a super I'm secret. I'm going to put another drink on your tab. That's a no-no. Copy, John. <laughs> All right. So we don't have any emails today, but I do have a tweet. Uh, this is from at VR Matrix 3. Enjoying the podcast and D&D campaign. Keep it up. I listen to them while I'm at work and home. I also drop it on our live broadcast when we are playing our Dungeons and Destinies. I have been working on my first campaign, Transformers, and I'm DMing it too. Thank you. Also, I would like to hear how you're... Transformers D I mean is going. Yeah, let us know. I think it'll be fun. Can't wait to to watch some yes, of this. Tell me so we can copy some of your material. <laughs> copy <Copy-tron. laughs> <Copy-tron. laughs> <laughs> All right, if that's it, are you ready for Transformers More Than Meets the Eye Volume 4? I'm ready. I'm more ready. I'm ready for more chaos. Ready, Freddy Tron. <laughs> If you've enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing. We all hope you are staying safe out there. Till all are one. <laughs> Till all are one. Till all are one. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Swerves Bar Podcast. You can also find us on Twitter at Swerves Bar. If you are interested in more content, try checking out the spinoff D&D Transform and Rollout Rise of the World Killers. Let's tune in for a preview now. You guys hear Zephyr is moving in the vents. He's on the move! <laughs> shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, no. Oh. I'm gonna get that little punk. Roll me initiative. Did he, did he, did he even hide it? Excuse me? <laughs> Roll me initiative. Yeah. Exhilarating. There is also a YouTube channel with bonus content. Link will be provided below. End transmission.